A mom so desperate for money, she became a prostitute. I had no heart left, and I didn't want to be living anymore. Every John that you're with, it chips away at your soul, and it takes a piece of your soul. The deal that restored her body and soul on today's 700 Club Interactive. On 700 Club Interactive, we use technology to pray for each other and explore topics that matter to you. Watch what God is doing in the world today. Well, welcome to the show. Today we're going to be talking about making a bargain with God. And I think a lot of people, when we get in trouble, uh, we all do the sort of jailhouse prayer where we say, Lord, if you get me out of this, then I'll do such and such and so and so. We make a bargain and we somehow think that God can be bought. Well, today we're going to talk about that issue. And what, what does the Bible say about it? But before we get to that, we're going to show you a story. And here's a gal named Tanaya. She was a single mother. She didn't have any way to make money. And so she made a bargain, not with God, but with the devil, by saying, okay, I'll go out and prostitute myself, and that'll be the way I make money so I can support my children. Well, her bargain got her in trouble because her very profession became the reason someone said, you no longer should have custody of those children. Well, that drove her back to God, and she made a bargain with God uh, that, not, that got her the custody she was looking for, and also saved her soul. I always wanted to be loved. And I was always looking for my father's acceptance. And I grew up thinking abuse was normal. That's all I'd seen. The only time Tanaya Fialu's alcoholic father gave her attention was when he beat her. When she was 11, Canadian Social Services gave her mom a choice, her husband or her child. And I remembered how much I hurt when I was in the courtroom and my mom chose my dad over me and let me go to foster care. And I felt so abandoned. I was put in 13 different foster homes in one year. And I was moving around faster than, you know, I could unpack my suitcase. She was a ward of the state through her teens and had a child at 17. In her 20s, she was pregnant again and got married. I married somebody that was just like my father. Every day he was telling me, you know, I was stupid, I was ugly, I wasn't good enough. I didn't feel like I was worthy of being loved by anyone. She moved with her kids to a women's shelter to escape the violence, but her husband challenged her for custody. Tanaya needed $7,000 to retain a lawyer, so she looked for a job. An ad in the paper caught her eye. And the ad said, earn a sum of up to $1,500 a day. Female owned and operated, fun, friendly, safe work environment. I thought, wow, that seems almost too good to be true. It was. The fun, friendly job was prostitution. Tanaya took the job. I remember coming home that night after making my first $1,700. And I jumped in the shower and I just couldn't stop scrubbing my body enough. I just felt so dirty. She prostituted herself for several years and went deeper into the sex industry. She eventually owned several brothels with hundreds of girls working for her, but her new lifestyle took a toll. My spirit was broken, I just, you know, on the outside, according to the world, I appeared to have it all. But inside, I had nothing. I had no heart left. And I didn't want to be living anymore. Every John that you're with, it chips away at your soul. And it takes a piece of your soul. And eventually, you're the walking dead. Meanwhile, the custody battle lasted four years word had gotten to the courts and media about Tanaya's line of work. Her chances of getting custody of her children were slim, and she knew it. Tanaya made a deal with God. I was angry at God my whole life. If God was real, why would I have had this childhood? And my grandmother was on her deathbed, 
And she kept telling me, Tanaya, you got to give your life to God. And I'd say, God's a goof. I hate God. And she said, God never turned his back on you, Tanaya. You turned it on him. he will always be there. So one night, I was on my knees and I was weeping. And I was like, God, I don't like you. I hate you right now. Like, why did this happen? You know? But I keep hearing about you. And if you give me custody, then I'll believe you're real because it'll be a miracle. And if you do, I'll give my life to you. I woke up the next day, I was reading in the paper and it said, porn industry mom wins soul custody. And I thought, wow, if they're giving it to porn stars, maybe I have a chance. And I read a little further. <laughs> Tanaya Fiello got soul custody. And my heart just stopped and I was like, I called my lawyer and my, you know, he said I didn't get a chance to get to the phone because I was in court and God had given me sole custody. Tanaya shut down her brothels and walked away from her life as a madam. She gave her life over to God and started going to church. God's always there extending his hand. We just don't take it. And I realize that now, looking back, that God was always there for me. It's me that turned my back on him. But when you turn to God, he's always there. And he can take all the hardships and he can turn it around for his glory. Tanaya reaches out to some of the same people she worked with in the brothels with the hope she found in Jesus Christ. When I'm working with these people, women that are being bought and sold every day and they have no hope, and then I see them led to Christ and now saved, there's no bigger joy than that. To know that I, God used me to help them get out of that. Now that the Lord has come into my life, I know I have a purpose and a calling. And I know that I'm worthy of being loved. And I know that there is a God, Jesus, that loves me more than I ever thought possible. Jesus does love you. I, I love Tania's story and how she's finally come to the realization she didn't need to make the bargain with God. All she had to do was believe him and, and believe his covenant. And it's the covenant that Jesus made when he lifted the cup of blessing to the Last Supper and said, this is the new covenant in my blood. And it's the promise that he'll save, he'll deliver, he'll heal, he'll, do, he'll be your all in all if you just let him. Now, let's look at what the Bible says about making bargains with God. And uh, I find it amazing that one of the first bargains you find is actually a patriarch. It's Jacob, and it's, you know, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Jacob made a bargain with God uh, about what were the conditions for him uh, saying God was God. Well, you find in Genesis chapter 28, Jacob had a dream, and, we, and this is where we get Jacob's ladder. And in the dream, God says to him, he stands at the top of the ladder and says to him, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and your descendants. Also, your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the west, to the east, to the north, the south, and you and your seed. All the families of the earth shall be blessed. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. Well, that's an amazing promise. And if you ever have a dream where God makes a promise like that, well, 
You know, you can bank on it. It's amazing what Jacob did. He awoke from the sleep and, and says in, in Genesis chapter 28 that the Lord is in this place. I didn't know it. And how awesome is this? And this is the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. And he, so he rose. He took the stone that he had slept on. He set it up as a pillar, poiled oil on top of it. And then he called the name of the place Bethel, which means house of God. So he renamed the place. And then he says something very interesting. He says he makes a vow. It's in Genesis chapter 28, verses 20 through 21. If God will be with me, even though God had just promised that, if God will be with me and keep me in the way that I'm going, and then give me bread to eat and clothing to put on. So Jacob's very interested at this point in time, some, what, what's going on with him physically. Will I have enough to eat? Will I have clothes to wear? And uh, come back to my father's house in peace. If I can do all these things, then the Lord shall be my God. So he's making a bargain, isn't he? And he's saying, well, that was a nice promise, God, but, but here are the conditions uh, of me making you God. And so you can, you can see even his unbelief at the promise in the bargain that he's made. And that's one of the key points. And when you bargain with God, it actually shows your unbelief. The amazing thing is God took Jacob at his word and held him to the bargain. You find that in Genesis 31, verse 13. I am the God of Bethel. And he says, I, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the God of that place where you... Uh, anointed the pillar and where you made a vow to me. Now arise, get out of this land and return to the land of your family. So God held Jacob to his bargain and said, now you've got to start doing what you said you would do. And Jacob, it's now time for you to return. Even though that was his promise and he promised, I'll be with you until I fulfill everything I've said about you. Jacob still felt the need to make a bargain. Now, this is what Moses said about making bargains, and you find it in Deuteronomy 23. When you make a vow to the Lord your God, you shall not delay to pay it, for the Lord your God will surely require it of you, and it will be a sin to you. Solomon goes further in Ecclesiastes and says, when you make a vow to God, do not delay to pay it, for he has no pleasure in fools. Pay what you have vowed. Better not to vow than to vow and not pay. I would encourage you, you don't need to make a bargain with God. The bargain has already been made and made by him. Where his bargain is, I will bless you. I will save you. I will forgive you. I will fill you with my Holy Spirit. I will give you the gifts of the Spirit. I will give you the fruit of the Spirit. And I want you to be with me for all eternity. Well, that's a bargain and a half, and it doesn't require anything on our part but to believe it. And the more you try to cut bargains with God, you know, I'll change, I'll do this, if you do this, you're actually professing how much you don't believe the covenant that Jesus laid out in his blood. This is the new covenant in my blood. Trust him. You can count on his unfailing love. You can count that he wants to give you a hope and a future. You can count that when you call to him, he will answer you and show you great and mighty things. You can count that he wants to give you the desires of, of your heart. All you have to do is say all the promises of God are yes and amen for those who are in Christ Jesus. And when you understand the bargain that's already been made and already been made in his blood, well, then there's no need for you to bargain anything other than say, my Lord and my God, I believe. Well, still ahead, a Muslim sees a vision of Jesus. Hear what Jesus said to him when we come back. In 2008, my husband, Gary, departed for heaven. I was still grieving. And then to find out I had cancer, I began praying, God, how do I do this? Where do I do this? Cancer Treatment Centers of America was the place. 
Dr. Neelam outlined a plan that would take care of my mind and my body, and she prayed with me. For Bible-believing Christians, we're able to pray with them in a much deeper way as they begin to really rely upon their faith. At Cancer Treatment Centers of America, we believe in the power of faith and prayer as indispensable allies in the fight against complex and advanced stage cancer. I'm back in Telluride on the mountain skiing. I feel strong and healthy. Advanced medicine and technology. And I am a survivor. The warm embrace of the spirit and the power of prayer. These are happy tears. Please go to cancercenter.com forward slash faith. Appointments available now. Cancer Treatment Centers of America, care that never quits. If you're the mother of a child with behavior problems, I'd like to talk to you. My name is Janet Lehman, and I'm a behavioral therapist and a mom. I know what it's like when the child that you love becomes a defiant, out-of-control child who disrespects you. That's why my husband James and I created the Total Transformation, the program that tens of thousands of moms are now using to turn around their child's behavior. If you've heard about the Total Transformation and wondered if it will work for you, now you can try it for free. I'm willing to give away a thousand programs today for free. All you need to do is get the program and let us know how it works for you. We'll let you keep it for free. I know the Total Transformation works because I used these techniques with my own son and with troubled kids for over 30 years. Let me prove to you that it works by giving you the program free. Call the number on your screen now to get the total transformation free. He dreamed of a career in the NBA. My whole mindset was, I'm going to the NBA, I'm gonna get paid, have fun. It was everything he lived for. God was in the far back burner at this time. But God had other plans for Anthony Rodman. And God said, I need to get your attention, I need to get your attention. And another dream. And I didn't have any clients, I had nothing. So I just said, like, Lord, whatever you want me to do, I'll go. On the 700 Club, next. When an Indonesian man named Suwandi lost all his money, he made a deal with God. If you help me, I'll follow you. That's when Suwandi had a vision that did more than just solve his money problems. It changed his life. When Suwandi realized that he'd fallen for a scam, he couldn't believe it. A so-called investment meant to help his family financially had actually driven him deeper into debt. I had invested in what I thought was a legitimate company. Two weeks after he handed over the cash, Suwandi read in the newspaper that the business had been scamming people. Suwandi began to worry about how he would repay his debts to the bank and to the relatives he borrowed from. One night, he turned on Seleucy, a CBN television program that means solutions. That night on Seleucy was the story about a young woman who was seriously ill, but she depended on God and experienced a miracle. Although it was the first time he'd ever watched a CBN program, Sawandi decided to pray with the hosts. I prayed to Jesus Christ, to the God that Solusi mentioned in the program. I said, God, if you really are the Savior, please help me with my problems. If you do, I promise I will be your faithful follower. After praying, Sawandi says he suddenly saw a person standing in front of him. Then I saw a male figure wearing a white garment. He was lifting up one of his hands. He said, I am able to lift the burden from you. The next morning, Suwandi sent a text message to CBN sharing his experience and asking for prayer. Just one week later, Suwandi landed a new job as a driver, which paid him twice what he'd made at his previous job. And that helped him to begin paying off his debts. Suwandi then joined a local church, and soon his whole family was following Jesus. It was Solusi that introduced me to Jesus Christ. Everything I have become is because of God, who I got to know through CBN's Solusi. God's not looking for our bargain. He's looking for our love. He doesn't want us loving him out of obligation, but because of his love to us, it's the love of God that leads to repentance. And all we have to do is believe that. And when Suwandi believed it, amazing things happened. God lifted the burden. Now, how is that possible in a Muslim country
for Suwandi to hear that kind of message? Well, it's because of people like you that say, yes, we want to get the good news out. We want the gospel preached around the world. If that's you, join with us. Uh, join the 700 Club. We're a lot more than just a TV show. We want to reach out with hands of love and compassion to people who are hurting around the world, and especially we want to tell them the good news that Jesus loves them. Jesus has saved them, and it's the best news the world has ever seen. If you want to be a part of it, give us a call. Number's toll-free, 888-777-1999. Just say, I want to join the 700 Club. How much is that? Well, it's just $20 a month, 65 cents a day, and you join with tens of thousands of people that want to see the good news spread around the world. So if that's you, call us. When you call, ask for a Pledge Express. That's electronic monthly giving. Bank does all the work. There's no checks to write. We say so much on the processing. We can send Power for Life monthly teaching CDs back to you. So if you'd like those, ask for Pledge Express when you call. Well, skateboarding legend Christian Hosoi was flying high at the peak of his career. He was breaking world records and receiving major endorsements with Converse and Swatch. But fame well, wasn't enough. In his spare time, drugs, alcohol, parties, they all consumed him. And it didn't take long before his extracurricular activities landed him in jail. because this is gonna go real fast. In my career, vertical skateboarding was the sport. It was the discipline in skateboarding. It was riding pools, it was blasting airs, it was grinding, you know, coping. So my career really, it generated so fast, it advanced so quickly that it was, it was almost like getting shot through a cannon and all of a sudden I'm, about to be one of the best skateboarders in the world. My passion for skateboarding when I first started was genuine, sincere, it was just pure. I was making 20, 30, $40,000 a month on sponsorship, whether it was clothing, shoes, wheels, um, trucks, and my own company. You know, as I got older, things changed. I started liking the limelight. I started craving the applause. I was living this rock star lifestyle. You know, first drug that I tried was marijuana. Then it ended up going into acid, mushrooms, cocaine, quaaludes, speed, black beauties, to pink hearts, 2020s. I mean, we ordered these things out of High Times magazines and sold them at the clubs at 15 years old. Then I got in, I'd done heroin, I did crack cocaine, and none of the, the drugs really hooked into me like crystal methamphetamine did. Addiction feels like, you know, you have it all under control, and then all of a sudden you're so dependent upon it that you can't even wake up without it. You can't go to sleep without it. You can't leave the house without it. You don't want to go anywhere before doing it. And that's when it's got control over you. It becomes your master. I was saying tomorrow I'll quit, tomorrow I'll quit, tomorrow, 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 and it just never happened. And I decided to take crystal meth on an airplane to Honolulu, Hawaii, and there was all these detectives all these undercover agents sitting there waiting for me. And that's when I realized I'm in trouble. And when I finally got into the cell, and actually the inmates told me, look, you are looking at 10 years, Christian. And all of a sudden I was thinking, man, I'm never going to get out of here. I'm calling to the silk tongue liar, following the godless way. To the back door man with the back door plan. When you go to jail, they always give you a first phone call, and I was going to call my girlfriend, and I'm saying, look, I don't know if I'm going to make it. I'm looking at 10 years, and she's like, I don't know how we're going to get through this, but we just got to trust in God. And she said, go get a Bible, Christian. Take the Bible. I go to my cell. I'm thinking, okay, where do I start? And so I flipped through the pages, and I got to Kings, and, and that's where I went, wow, I can identify with Kings, because, you know, I thought I was this 
this king of skateboarding. And I thought, man, I'm just going to start there. King David said, if you'll follow the Lord all the days of your life, obey his commandments, his statutes, his precepts, that the Lord will be with you and you'll prosper. I was like, I completely get it. And I said, God, if you're real, will you help me? And that night, I believe that the Holy Spirit came in and he, and he spoke into my heart. For the first time in my life, I felt like I was free, meaning I had victory. And when I got there, I was looking at 10 years. I got my sentence reduced to five. And that's half of what I was supposed to get as I spent that full five years in prison. Time didn't take advantage of me. I took advantage of the time to continually grow in my faith and mature and cultivate that relationship with Jesus. You know, who would have ever, ever thought that a skateboarder, you know, drug addict, wannabe rock star could be used by God one day? But here I am saying, use my life, God. And God is using every avenue to be able to preach the gospel. I want them to see Jesus in me. Amen. And I'm just so thankful to just be able to use all my gifts and talents to be able to represent God's kingdom here on this earth. I want them to see Jesus in me. And just imagine being able to say that from your heart and mean it and have it be real. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus, Start one today. All you have to do is pray the same simple prayer that Christian prayed. Jesus, if you're real, if this is true, if you really want to forgive me, if you really want to save me, if you really want to be in my life, if you really want to guide me, show me. Can you show up for me? And it's amazing what happens when you pray that. The Bible says that when you seek him with all of your heart, all of your heart, then you'll find him. For Christian, that took a time in jail where he finally got real and said, the life I've been living, it's, it's not working. But here's a Bible. Here's what the Bible says. Here's a promise from the Bible. I'm going to take that and I'm going to say, Jesus, if this is true, I want this. I want this for me. And if you do the same thing, he'll show up for you. He can literally change your life and turn it around. He can influence everything about you. He can work all things together for good. For who? For the people that love him and are called according to his purpose. Are you called? Yes. That's why you're listening right now. Because the call's gone forth. Today is the day of salvation. The call's out there. All you have to do is say, Jesus, I want to love you. I want to know you. Will you come to me? If that's you, call us. Number's toll free, 888-777-1999. Just say to the person who answers that call, that made the same prayer, I want to find Jesus today. I've heard he's real. I've heard he can change me. I want that. When you call, we've got a free packet for you. It's called A New Day, and in it is a teaching on what do Christians believe? What's the foundation of the Christian faith? What are the, the pillars that we say, okay, these are, these are the really important things that Christians believe. There's also, what do you do now once you've become a Christian? How do you live the Christian life? It's all free. Phone call's free. Packet's free. Call us now, 888-777-1999. Well, this is 700 Club Interactive, so we're going to Marguerite in the chat room. This is from Caleb. So I know that God has a plan for all of us, but I also know that every decision we make and every event in our lives, whether good or bad, can change us. So my question is, does God's purpose for us ever change? Um, realize, I, I, I sense a lot of condemnation in your question that you're condemning yourself and you're starting to look at every single act you've ever done. Take, it, take heart in God works all things together for good for them that love him and are called according to his purpose. So if that's you, then he can even take your mistakes and work them together for good. He can take even the grossest sin. I mean, we just saw a, a story of you know, extreme drug addiction, but that is now fueling, I'm going to go reach drug addicts and bring them into the kingdom. 
realize God's love for you never changes. We leave you with this word from Galatians. If you've been called to live in freedom, not freedom to satisfy your sinful nature, but freedom to serve one another in love.